Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and this is the last of a series of three interviews I did at PAX East over the weekend, the big video game exposition. And uh, what I wanted to do while I was there is talk to game developers who are coming at the industry from different perspectives. So we had in our first interview, Steve Alexander with Infamous Games, who is an indie developer uh, developing some cool point and click adventures and has found an audience for his titles. And it's really cool because he got started very recently from scratch and he's really building up a pretty cool company uh, with people all over the world just using modern platforms like Steam and GOG to distribute his games. That was a fun discussion. We also heard from Al Bickham from Creative Assembly. Uh, they are a big AAA development studio working on Total War Warhammer, which is about to be published by Sega. A couple hundred people working on that game, a very different perspective from Al. And then we also are going to hear right now from Ron Gilbert, who is an industry veteran who's coming full circle. So he started as an independent developer back in the days of the Commodore 64 and the Apple II. Uh, he then you know, got into the gaming industry in its infancy as it was growing, uh, and now he's back developing independent games once again with his new game, Thimbleweed Park, which just got successfully funded on Kickstarter. So now we're going to hear from Ron and hear about how the industry has changed and some of his uh, thoughts on where it is going. So let's take it away and hear what he has to say. Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we are back at PAX East, and I'm here with Ron Gilbert, who's got a great new game. Now, Ron is um, kind of somebody I grew up with, even though it might creep you out for me to say that. <laughs> That's a little weird. Yeah, but uh, he is uh, one of the developers of one of my favorite games from when I was a kid called uh, Maniac Mansion, and now he's back with another point-and-click adventure. And we've been talking with developers uh, throughout PAX East, just trying to figure out you know, where the indie game market is going. And Ron is somebody who started in uh, a time when point-and-clicks were kind of the AAA title idle and now they're coming back so why did this feel like the right time to launch a new game and tell us about Thimbleweed Park a little bit too yeah well I think you know I think there has been kind of this resurgence in adventure games and, and a lot of it I attribute to the you know the gaming market is growing and it's it's getting into a lot of different people and people like stories they like characters and I think adventure games really satisfy that with the people because they are they are about stories and about characters. And what's this new game about? It looks very similar to the games I've played in the past. It's got, you know, it's got that retro look, but some modern performance to it. What, what's Thimbleweed Park like, and what, what's it going to take players through? Yeah, Thimbleweed Park. It's a story of these two detectives, uh, Agent Ray and Reyes, that show up uh, because this body has been found in a river, and they're there to investigate what's going on. But the body is really just the tip of the iceberg of the weirdness that is going on in this town of Thimbleweed Park. And so, as a player. You know, you start out controlling the two of them. You can switch between them, like in Maniac Mansion. Um, and as you meet different characters, like you meet Ransom the Crown or Dolores or um, or Franklin, once you've met them, you can then control them. So you can eventually control five different characters, switch between them at any time you want, and play with whatever character you like the best. It's very neat because that was a play mechanic that was kind of in Maniac Mansion too, right? You could control different characters, so a similar kind of thing here, but expanded, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, that was. One of the one of the core things about Maniac Mansion was that character switching, and you know it, we we did it a little bit, but it's like we really wanted to really go after it with Thimbleweed Park and have the five different characters. There's you know six different endings to the game, you know the different characters. So it was something we really liked about Maniac Mansion. You did a Kickstarter with this, probably a very different way to market a video game now than maybe when we were playing as younger people. Um, so what was that like? Yeah, Kickstarter is great, you know, because you can go kind of right out to the people that like the genre of game and you can really you know uh, you kind of go after their enthusiasm for what you're building uh, you know and you're not beholden to some big publisher you know is putting unrealistic demands on you you know instead you're beholden to you know 10,000 people are putting <laughs> unrealistic demands but they all love you and they want you to succeed right that's a difference yeah they do they do it's, it's, and it's been great so far you know our backers have been absolutely wonderful uh, you know we've had a great time uh, with the blog that we do we do a blog that we update two or three times a week and we have had a great time talking to them about the game and really showing them what the process of putting together a game like this is like. Why do you think uh, these point-and-click adventures have become popular again? It was a doubt, there has been such a, 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 a loss of them over a very long period of time. I've been surprised it really hasn't been much up until the last year or so maybe. Uh, what do you attribute that to? I don't know that I have an answer to that question. You know, I think it's just, it's just maybe it's just one of those things that it's, it's time is here again. You know, to to have one of those. And what, what would you say as far as the audience that's now uh, backing this product? Are they older gamers, younger gamers, a mix of both? I think it's, it's a mix of both. 
you know, there's a lot of people back the game because they were, you know, fans of the, you know, Monkey Island and Maniac Mansion. But I've also got a lot of backers who weren't even alive when Maniac Mansion came out. But, you know, they've heard a lot about the genre or maybe they got to play those games, you know, at some point much later on. And they really fell in love with them. So, you know, our backers are really across the board in terms of that stuff. Yeah, it looks great. It's really exciting to see that. How different is it to develop a point and click now in 2016 than it was back in the 80s? Uh, you know, it's a lot easier just because we have much better tools. You know, the tools that we had back then for doing art were very, very primitive. Now we have Photoshop, which is amazing. Uh, just being able to program and debug on machines is so much easier than it was back then. Um, you know, we also have 30 years of experience at just, you know, what's it like to, you know, to, to schedule a game and budget a game and all of those things that has just made it a lot easier. And how's it now? Because I guess in the past, when gaming development was beginning, it was uh, a, an individual in a room with a plastic bag for the floppy disk, right? And then it became big companies. And what's it been like for you to go through all of that uh, and now coming back to starting from, from scratch again on your own? Yeah, you know, the, the whole industry has gone full full circle, right? When You know, when we made Maniac Mansion, there were three people on that project, right? Only three people. And now it's like, now you get really nice games that are made by one and two and three people again. It's like you don't, you know, you don't need this this giant, you know, $100 million project uh, to build a hit game. And a lot of games are made by a couple of people who are selling a million and a million and a half copies. So I think that's just wonderful because that is really how I like to make games. I like small teams of people where everybody can really share the vision and really feel involved. That whatever piece they're doing really matters because it's a small team of people. When's the game going to be available and how do you get it? Uh, the game will be out uh, either in October or January, one of those two dates, uh, and it'll be available online. You know, get it through Steam or GOG or you know any of the digital services. It'll also be out on Xbox One and iOS and Android and probably some other platforms as well. Wow, so if you got a device, it's going to play this game. That's a lot different than it used to be, too. Yeah, your toaster will play this game. Right, excellent. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Ryan. It was a pleasure. Thank you. So there you have it, three different perspectives on the gaming industry, but what was really interesting was to hear how uh, the distribution platforms are really making it easier for everybody, the AAA studios all the way down to the indie developers, uh, because there's really no cost of distribution anymore, which I think for a lot of independent developers uh, was a big barrier uh, to getting your games out there. So back in the early days of the Apple II and the Commodore, you used to have to you know, copy disks and put them in little baggies and mail them to uh, game stores around the country, and there was a real risk on the part of the shop owner and the game developer as to whether or not these games would sell. Uh, now we've got platforms that will take care of that distribution for the developers. So they don't really have to uh, budget anything to get the game out to people. They have to price it, of course, because the, the platform takes a cut. But there's no you know, duplication cost. There's no trucks to deliver things. It's really made life a lot easier. It's very similar to what YouTube has done because uh, I can make a video here at my house and upload it to YouTube for free. And that is a big change from having to make tapes and send it to TV stations and hope they'd air it which would never happen before in the past either. So we're seeing uh, a tremendous uh, change now in, in so many different areas. And the gaming industry uh, is certainly one of those areas that uh, is being changed, I think, for the better because we're seeing some awesome games that are uh, getting in the hands of people that probably never would have been able to in the past. And I'm thinking about games like Rocket League and the upcoming No Man's Sky, uh, two titles that are developed by small teams that are finding huge audiences out there. And this has been a really exciting time to be a game player but also a game developer. This is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. Do let me know what you thought of this series and if I should continue doing things like this at the other uh, places that I visit from time to time throughout the year. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Shabib. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.